it, you know what was interesting, Rob, this weekend, and we had talked about it last week, how, you know, you weren't into a couple of the games, Baltimore, Cincinnati, because Lamar Jackson was out, and Buffalo, Miami, because um, uh, Tua was out for Miami. And Rob, those turned out to be some great games, two of the best games of the weekend. Yeah. Both of them were close, uh, and and the end was in doubt in both of them. Yeah, some bad football play, but definitely better to watch than I would have expected originally. And it said a lot about the other teams as we go forward, really. I, honestly? I'm dead um, serious. I mean, and my pick to win the Super Bowl is Buffalo, and you never know they didn't look like a exactly Super Bowl how team, things no, that night. work out. But if two is there – you would think Miami wins that game. And if Lamar is there, you would think Baltimore wins that and, game. And, Mc, and McDaniel didn't – he was bad. Like, Well, he was bad management. at the end with the clock management. Yeah, I mean, I give him credit for having a, an undermanned team. I mean, with a third-string quarterback there, uh, having them right there in the hunt and a chance to win. But, yeah, the delays of games – You can't have that, Chris. Games, at the, oh, just, God. Yeah. Brutal. And it was just over and over again. I mean, it wasn't like just one. Um, so yeah, but, um, you mentioned it, Rob Buffalo did not look like a Super Bowl champion yesterday or Saturday, uh, or no yesterday, yesterday. And, um, they're my pick. I'm sticking with them, but one of the Josh Allen was at times great. And he was at times exasperating Rob. And I said a few, several months ago on our show that, he is this generation's Brett Favre. And yesterday just made me feel even more strongly about that. That, I mean, he he's awesome. I mean, his running ability, obviously his style is a little different than Favre's. Uh, he runs more and stuff like that. But his running ability, his arm, I mean, he made some wonderful throws yesterday. Um, but... He also can make the bad play. Uh, doesn't do it every game. I don't think he's as reckless as Favre, but he he almost seems like sometimes he just gets scatterbrained or something and just does something like just out of the blue that's a bad play. Some of it's trying to make things happen with when he runs the ball, but he's holding it out there, you know, in one hand. And um, yesterday, of course, he had the huge fumble. Um that was returned for a touchdown. But, yeah, Rob, I, I think he is that this generation's Brett Favre. Now, Favre won a Super Bowl, but he only won one. Uh, obviously, Allen hasn't done that yet. I think he can still win a Super Bowl, and maybe it'll be this year. But you just got to kind of live with that, at least for now. Maybe he'll get it under control. I think when Brian Dayball was there, who he did a great job, Rob, this year with Daniel Jones. We'll talk about that later. But he, he had, you know... Allen more under control as far as the turnovers. Uh, but that's what I see from him. Um, and it's going to be some awesome times, but it's going to be some exasperating times if you're a Buffalo fan. Yeah, I don't know about Brett Favre uh, yet, Chris. I, I get the turnover situation. Uh, we saw Peyton Manning early in his career had the interception bug uh, with turnovers. 15 his first year, 23, 19. His first few years were bad. And then he kind of settled in and obviously won some MVPs uh, with Josh Allen. Uh, and, and, of course, Brett Favre won three in a row, the only quarterback to win three in a row right? despite all the interceptions. And you did say he won a Super Bowl. Uh, but they're definitely uh, – Reasons. Manning, Rob, Manning had 28 interceptions his first year. Was it 28? Yeah. I knew it was more than 15. What like, yeah. Hold on, wait a minute. He I had 26 it. touchdowns and 28 picks. Yeah, my, 28 my picks. Yeah, no, he was bad. That's I mean, I was... it was guys turned it over a little more back then because we've talked about the rules. Right. It was 1998, but still 28. Yeah. 28's a lot in any era. Yeah, but he <laughs> but he wound up uh, bouncing, you know what I mean, uh, curtailing yeah. that. And, of course, winning, uh, what is it, five MVPs. I mean, he still threw, you know, he was double-digit interceptions every year but one. Yeah, but, but, that's, um, for, but that's like yeah. most people. And Allen's right. not, like, out of control. I mean, no, he's not going to throw as many as far. But, but, the, but the, tur the turnovers are bothersome, Chris, because they right. happen way too often 
for a guy as talented as him and and uh, fumbles is not just interceptions. He fumbles the ball right, too. Because he runs right. right. So there's always that situation. But I do, and uh, uh, you know, I don't know. I just got a the the Buffalo Bills just were not as impressive as I thought they would have been. I don't. I don't. And and you know, we could talk about the turnovers or whatever. But man, you well, know, Rob, I, I, the turnover. Like I think that's why. Like they, Miami got 17 points off of Josh Allen's turnovers. I mentioned the fumble that was turned into a touchdown. Right. Um, but the defense, you know, you can look at it and say at times that, wow, they, their defense wasn't that good. But Allen put them in some bad situations. Yeah, that, that you always have to look at that when you talk about defense because, you know, if you give up the football, uh, you know, at the 30 or whatever it is, right, with right. a bat, and then the defense has very little room to, to move or maneuver, Chris, and then before you know it, they give up a touchdown, but but it wasn't like they marched down the field 70 yards. They, right. they had a short field. Right. And you set Absolutely. them up, and it puts in for a tough spot. So uh, I'm not I'm not writing off Buffalo yet, but I that game, just it just didn't feel right. If you were a Buffalo Bills fan, I'm sure you're happy you won, but you you, you had to hold your breath and think what would have happened. You just said if Tua played, or you had a little more of experienced coach, or you know, um, it, it, you know they didn't shoot themselves in the foot because because right. you can't have a third string quarterback, Chris, where you where you bringing in plays and trying to get them set with eight seconds to go, like like. No, that, that, that I mean that, that's that was not, why you talking about the delays. Delay yeah, the of delay games. Of game. Yeah, absolutely, you can't do that, it. There's no doubt. And with eight seconds to go, yeah, <laughs> like, he he's new. I mean, fairly new. He's certainly not used to being in those situations. Right, Tyler Thompson and Rob. He was eighteen for forty five, which obviously isn't good. That's not good. That's what through I'm, two picks, and then Allen was sacked seven times. And it still was a three point game, right? And and that that's to me that shows you that those turnovers were huge, um, because Buffalo, you know, outgained them tremendously. They rushed for over hundred yards. Miami rushed for forty two. So you know, Miami didn't even have barely had two hundred fifty yards total. But they should have never been that because close. of those right. turnovers. <clears throat> No doubt. And so I'm I'm kind of as a guy that picked Buffalo to win it and obviously Rob we we like our picks to win. I'm looking at it as um Miami, you know, a divisional opponent. It's tough to beat divisional opponents um just cuz they they know you, they're familiar with what you do, a third time playing them. Uh I'm looking at it like that. Obviously Miami beat them earlier in the year and then the Bills beat them in that snow up in Buffalo. Uh, so I'm hoping that's what it was. I mean, obviously, Cincinnati didn't look great. That's who they play next week. So, you know, both of the teams, the two and three seeds didn't really look great. So uh, we'll see next week. But, yeah, I, I, there's no doubt that Buffalo didn't look like uh, the, a world beater and the world beater that many people have said they are. But, um We'll see. They, they're they still alive, and that's what it is, Rob. In the playoffs, it is win and advance, and they certainly did that. Your uh, thoughts on Josh Allen. Is he this generation's Brett Favre, and will that ultimately cost the Bills their Super Bowl this year? Your thoughts to weigh in. All right, let's kick it off with uh, Chris in New York. You're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What up, Chris? Uh Hello, and uh, I think that Josh Allen is uh, this generation's Brett Favre. I think his turnovers will cost the Bills their Super Bowl this year, and just like uh, it cost them against Minnesota. And uh, yeah, so you're in agreement with Chris. All right. Now, are you a Bills fan? Oh uh, no, not really. Okay. All right. All right. Well, thank Appreciate you for the the, uh, the 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 opinion. Yes. Uh, yeah. Let's go to uh, Chili Tim in Atlanta. He was straight to the point. Oh wait a minute! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was no no messing around. Chili Tim, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? How's it going on this what's MLK up, Luke? day today? Yes, what's up, yes. Luke? Let us not be remiss. That's to right. Wish everyone a happy Martin Luther King Day, yeah, and uh, also to think about it, what he meant to this country, and, and how we can 
get to his dream. No doubt. And yeah. thanks for the ultimate sacrifice that he made right. so that we all could live uh, equally together. So that's uh, no doubt about it, Tim. Yep. My take on, yeah, Brett Favre, yeah, he's this, this generation's Brett Favre. Because the one thing about Peyton Manning, you know, people always say, well, Peyton Manning, you know, his first year. But that was his first year. Josh Allen has been in the league for a few years now. Right. And you hadn't seen the maturation that you're looking for. And, you know, you want to see the improvement. But I just think at this point, it is who he is. And uh, it's going to, at some point, you know, it's going to cost the bills, I think. Uh, just like Brett Favre would just, you know, he would do those costly turnovers. You know, at times, yep. they just, like, you just scratch your head. Like, what was he thinking? Right. I think that's what's going to happen with uh, with uh, Josh Allen and the Bills. Unfortunately, I don't. I think he he'll never win a Super Bowl. Really? I don't believe he will. Yeah, I wow. don't think he ever will. Wow. All right, well, save that tape because he might win this year. <laughs> then we have to see what <laughs> Call us back. <laughs> yeah, Tim, call us back. I don't. I, I will. When, yeah. when he gets eliminated, I will call yeah, you. Yeah, call back because that's, <laughs> that's hard for me to three years in or whatever it's been. He's five, say, it's his fifth year. Five it's years in to year. say he'll never win. Wow. You think he'll win one? I mean, it's yeah. tough. Obviously, Aaron Rodgers only has one. Peyton only had one until his last season. So it's not easy. Dan no, no, Marino no. never got one. Yeah, but I'm not saying that. I, I'm with but you. I, but I think I, he'll definitely win one. If he plays eight or, you know, the way they're going in the rules of quarterbacks, he could play 10 years. You know what I mean? That's a oh, long he should time. Play long. Yeah, 10 yeah. more years. That's what I least. meant. That's yeah, what I yeah, meant. Yeah. 10 years on Absolutely. top of the five. Uh, Liam in uh, Phoenix. You're on the I Couple Fox Sports Radio. What's up? What's up, guys? Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of similarities, definitely. I think, like, it's deep, bring a completely separate kind of ball game. I'm not going to lie. I'm like, Brett Favre's a little bit before my time. I'm only in my 20s. But I think, like, from what I've seen, it's, like, pretty similar. I honestly wanted to ask you guys, like, a separate question, too. Like, you guys put that loss yesterday more on McDaniels or, like, kind of everything else that's happening. I guess, like, is it just Buffalo kind of persevering? For me. I thought it was kind of McDaniels had a really good game plan. He had, like, a specific strategy, you know, like, take your opportunities, take those turnovers, and he almost squeaked a win out with the third-string quarterback. And I think a lot of people are just giving him hate. And I'm a Bills fan. I'm scared of Mike McDaniel going for it. I'm not going to lie. Are you no, really? I, I, actually, I actually agree with you. Um, look, they shouldn't have been that close. Third-string quarterback no. um, in Buffalo. No. Yeah, and he but- did a great job having that. I think he's a very good coach. Um, and I think he did a great job yesterday. Obviously, the delay of games were bad, and yeah, that's yeah. on him. But, I mean, the fact that he had them that close, uh, I, I thought he did a good Yeah, job. I think he had help, uh, obviously, because Buffalo, you know, uh, helped them right, out. Right, turnover. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, 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 yeah. that's why I can't really look at it and say, oh, McDaniels, because I don't – and I'm not saying Chris turnovers are on a part of the game. They are, but they were a big part on why Miami was even in that, yeah, in that game. So 